the electric field due to a charged disk. The electric field due to a charged disk. We are looking for the electric field at point P, which is on the central line by the charged disk. We can look at the charged the disk is composed of many rings with a center overlap to that of a charged disk. And their radius varies from zero up, up, big, 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 up to capital R. We know from previous calculation, the electric field at point P on the central line, which is the distance z from the center of the ring is e equal to z q 4 pi to 0 z square plus r square to power of 3 half where q is the charge of the three now in our question this e is part of our e because we have to find the e produced by many different ring so we label it DE, the K charge on the string is DR, DQ. Now let's see, what is the DQ? DQ on this ring is equal to surface charge density rho times its area, surface area. Now, and its surface area equal to the circumstances of the ring, 2 pi R, multiplied by its width DR. This is area. Uh, so this is sigma dA is the dQ. Uh, we put them up, we get this answer. Okay, put a sigma z 2 pi r dr, this one. Uh, this dE is produced by this ring with radius r. And then we have a many. And then we know that by symmetry, all this e along the axis. So the total E, I mean, of this electric field produced by different ring is sigma dE, or integration of E, uh, because they are in the same direction. You just put them together. Okay? You do the integration of this one. This integration is, is not hard. It's easy. You see, 2R dR equal to d r square. You have r square. And the radius is from r, it's very small, zero, zero, big, 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 up to capital R. This is a range of r. Okay. And we do this integration. We rewrite two r dr as d z square over r square. Well, how? Because 2R dr is dr squared. Okay, you, you do the dr squared, you get 2R dr. And the z is a constant. We put it, put it, the d constant is zero. Why? Because in the denominator, we have z squared plus r squared. So in write this one, okay, we can see this is like, suppose z squared plus r squared is x. This is a dx over x to power three half okay and the integration is from r equal to zero to capital r uh, it's very easy we can get this answer okay hey okay. now let's look at the extreme situation suppose the r approach the infinity that means this disk become an infinite plane with the uniform charge density sigma. Uh, uh. In this case, R approaches infinity, so this term becomes zero, zero. So the E becomes sigma of a two to zero. Or Z equal to zero, that means the point P is on the surface, okay? And Z is zero, this term is equal to zero. So E equal to sigma over two epsilon zero. Okay. What does this mean? Physically, this means the electric field on the surface of the infinitive plane charge is sigma over 
to epsilon zero. Okay, we would have this conclusion in the next chapter. A point charge in an electric field. That's very simple. It would be exerted a force F equal to QE. The electrostatic force F acting on a charged particle located in an external electric field E points E in the direction of E if the charge Q of the particle is positive and in the opposite direction of E if Q is a negative charge. Measuring the elementary charge, American physicist Millikan measured the charge, elementary charge, through its oil drop experiments, a very famous drop experiment in physics. Okay, now, this you you spray oil, so many small drops of oil with some charge, and this is a electric field inside. Okay, when the oil drops grow inside, because of a charge, it can move up the body because of this this is the electric field. And you use the microscope to watch it. And what we find, and what we find is the charge on any object should be integral number of elementary charge. Uh, the n can only be integral number, cannot be point some 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 something. Okay. And this elementary charge is 1.60 times 10 to the uh, power of minus 19. Cooler. Uh, this is the charge which electron or proton carries. Because of this experiment, the 1923 Higgins Nobel Prize in Physics. This is American. Uh, this is a Millikan oil drop. This Millikan oil drop apparatus is similar to the device used in the first successful measurement of the charge on a single electron. Inside this chamber are two horizontal metal plates separated by about two centimeters. We'll spray a fine mist of oil droplets between the plates and observe them as they fall. If we apply a high voltage to the plates, some of the oil droplets are accelerated upward or downward because of the presence of minute electrical charges on the drops. We can reverse the direction of the field with this switch. Let's follow the motion of one of the drops as the field is reversed. First, the field is vertically upward, then off, then vertically downward. Notice how the droplet has reversed direction. Off upward, off, downward. Inject printing. Let's look at the inject printing, okay? This is inject the ink, okay? This is an input signal based on the, uh, the information you get. Uh, and it go to electric field and, it, and hit the paper and print it out. And this ink drop is about diame diameter, 30 micrometer, about uh, a half the thickness, thick diameter of your hair, okay? The velocity is 18 meters per second. In each second, you have 100,000 drops past this one, okay? And then we see after the ink get into the electric field, deviated. Figure shows the deflection place of an inkjet printer with superimposed coordinates axis x, y. Okay. An ink drops with a mass m of 1.310 to the power of negative 10 kilogram and a negative charge of magnitude q equals 1.5 times 10 uh, to the power of negative 13 coulomb enters the region between the plates. Initially moving along the x-axis 
with a speed Vx 18 meter per second. The length L of the plate is 1.6 meter, centimeter. The plates are charged and it thus produce an electric field at all points between them, uniform E. Assume that the field E is downward, uniform and has magnitude of 1.4 times 10 to the power of 6 Newton per coulomb. What is the vertical deflection of the drops at the far edge of the plate? This one, okay. The gravitational force on the drop is small relative to the electrostatic force acting on the drop and can be neglected. Now look at this one. Why well, we want to find the deviation? Why? Since there is no acceleration, acceleration so the y you could, you could have a t squared because this is a uniform electrophere, uniform force, uniform acceleration. So this is a constant acceleration along y direction. This a is equal to f of m. f is electric f, the q e over m. The t is the time from here to here. Okay, the velocity is v. 18 meters per second, length is L, so the T equals length L over VXL. We put this one inside, we get a Y. Uh, we get a Y. This is A, this is a T, and we put everything inside. Okay? Uh, so we get a Q is given 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 13. Okay? E is 1.4 times 10 to the power of 6 L, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 2 squared, over 2, M is 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 10, and V is 18 squared, very good, 4.64 is a very small number, okay, so we'll be very careful, control the charge Q within a few percent is essential.